All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will now go on to the panel discussion one that's scheduled after the coffee break. It's improving responsible management. What do companies need? So we've got three very distinguished speakers here. Uh, Madam Sumitra Nair from the Integrity PR Sindra Berha. She's a corporate responsibility consultant. Then we've got Yamper uh, Bahage Dr. Jaffa Indot. He is the founding president and CEO of Malaysian Alliance of Corporate Directors or MACD. And we've got Mr. Gerhard Weiss from the SCP Policy Support Malaysia and he's a team leader for the SCP Policy Support Malaysia. We would like to invite you, Madam, to start. Okay. Yes. Should be. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Very good afternoon to Yang Bhakti Datu Shafa Indo, Mr. Garagways, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers for inviting me to uh, share some experience on uh, this topic. Uh, when I was actually invited to speak, I used to be uh, the head of corporate responsibility at Digi uh, Telecommunications. This was a few months ago. Uh, since then, I've actually uh, left Digi and uh, I'm hoping to help other companies to pursue the CR agenda as well. So I've actually started on my own and I'm with uh, uh, now my own organization called Integrity. So the topic today, without uh, further ado, is uh, improving responsible management. What do companies need? We go on to the next, uh, yeah. Before I go into, you know, what is responsible management and why and what, it, what companies need, I think it's important to look at what are the trends out there that actually has brought about a much greater understanding, a more strategic understanding on the need for responsible management. And if you look around us today, these trends actually are creating uh, not just a greater demand, but also it is causing a, a greater expectation in terms of the resources that are required to meet these demands. If you think about it, we have more than 7 billion uh, global population today, a burgeoning middle class, middle income uh, consumer profile, new consumer profiles, uh, and you have more and more people living in the cities. Uh, you have climate change and global warming being precipitated. You have all kinds of trends that actually uh, are creating challenges for businesses, but also new opportunities. And I think this is why companies need to sort of sit up and think again about what responsible management is. Is it limited to uh, making a nice contribution out there? Uh, or is it a little bit more? You know, can a little bit more be milked, uh, be used and leveraged by having uh, more responsible management in place in the organization? <coughs> and, um, you know, sort of before you define what is responsible management, uh, and I was trying to think about it, is responsible management CSR or not, you know? Uh, I actually thought it's easier to talk about what it's not. And we all know these lessons, and we all have seen these examples, and there are more than enough uh, examples out there to tell us what responsible management is not, right? And that kind of creates a picture of what it should be. And if you think about it, sorry, the slide before, yeah. Um, you know, examples like the tainted milk incident in China, uh, BP and the Gulf of Mexico, you'll remember that. More recently, news international in the UK. Uh, and mobile phone hacking incidents. Uh, and then, of course, even the uh, global financial crisis, which uh, largely, you know, there was a ripple effect of many things, including the subprime crisis in the US. So a lot of issues out there that point to the consequences of not having responsible management. And I think that then gives us an impression or an understanding of what responsible management should be. It should address issues of safety. It should address issues of ethics. It should address uh, issues of uh, risk taking, yeah, uh, excessive risk taking, so on and so forth. And you know, I've not put the local examples, but we all in the room know that we have more than our fair share of local examples that we could also quote uh, when we think about what we should not do, and therefore then that guides us towards what we should be in responsible management. So 
I mean, not having a, a real definition of responsible management, I look towards the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, and the closest they had was, of course, the definition of CSI. And you know, we all know the definitions, and I think the previous speakers gave a very good uh, explanation of what CSR is. But you know, when you look at responsible management, really, for me, I think it's a little bit more um, systematic, it's a little bit more structured, a little bit more disciplined into how you actually put in place responsible management. And for me, what I sort of have come up with is, I think for me, management, responsible management is basically just management systems, processes, and practices that help companies to address their social, ethical, and environmental responsibilities in relation to their key stakeholders. And who are these key stakeholders? Uh, again, the previous speaker has spoken about them, your employees, uh, customers, investors, regulators, so on and so forth. So it's about how you put in place correct systems, processes, culture, and all of those kinds of things to address these, these areas. And it's also about addressing these areas, not just in relation to stakeholders, but also the business and natural environments. And I think the first slide, when I started talking about the trends around us, that really is our business environment today. We are facing greater congestion, greater pollution, greater devastation of natural resources, depletion of natural resources. We are having to think about issues like uh, producing much, much more food than we ever have uh, in the last you know, 30, 40 years or so, simply because of the business environment today. So in responsible management, therefore, is about how a company plays its role and carries out its business to address these challenges in a way that is not just good for society, but is also good for itself. Right? So therefore, then, responsible management to me creates value for corporations. It can create value. It's not about whether you donate a ringgit or 10 ringgit or a million, but it's really about how you draw the value out of what you do uh, and make it something which uh, can be leveraged both for society's well-being and for the company's well-being. Now, I've taken a very corporate view of this because my experience is mainly in implementing CSR within corporations, within corporate groups. So that is the angle I've taken. And for me then, therefore, you don't find the word uh, community or philanthropy on the side. I probably should have had that word, but it's not here. Because for me, I think when you're a business, at the end of the day, you need to think about the bottom line. Uh, I'm not completely a pro proponent of Milton Friedman, but I think there is some truth to what he says. This is how business is doing business, right? And yes, it needs to it needs to do that in a way that doesn't harm the society around it. But at the same time, it needs to ask the hard questions about what does this mean for my business. So for me, it's really two prong. One is looking at responsible management helps to manage risks, risks that go beyond financial risks, risks that sometimes are a little bit new and sometimes a little bit, uh, you know. Uh, a company that goes into it sometimes doesn't even realize it's a risk. They go into it not realizing that the risk is coming on board. Right? And these could be risks that are not just the reputation and, and financial, as I said, but it could be risk in the supply chain. Uh, two, three tiers down your supply chain. It could be risk that uh, rest with your sub, sub, sub contractors that affect you at the end of the day. Uh, human rights, and that was spoken about earlier, even corporate governance risks. right? Uh, and regulatory risks, of course. This, these we are more familiar with. Uh, at the same time, how we can also create value is it also helps to sustain growth. And here, what, uh, what we can actually gain out of having a responsible management system in place uh, is not just continuing to build on stakeholder trust. And when I talk about stakeholders here, uh, I don't just refer to government. Because I think in Malaysia, uh, for a lot of people, when we say stakeholder engagement, People automatically think it's the government. But I'm using stakeholder here in the real essence of the word, which means employee trust, consumer trust, investor trust, all the different stakeholder groups that you have and how you build trust with them. And having responsible management practices in place actually does help to build that trust and sustain that trust, which at the end of the day, as we all know, is critical if we are to have a license to operate and if we are to have uh, an acceptance of the organization within a society. The other one is uh, you know, how we can use responsible management to 
strengthen operational efficiency. I used to be with Digi, and I know the um, session before lunch, we had a speaker from Digi, uh, who I think spoke about the climate change program that, that they had done. And uh, that was one example of how companies can use uh, responsible management to strengthen operational efficiency. So the business case that we actually used to push the climate change agenda was one of operational efficiency, one of helping to manage operational expenditures uh, and long-term operational efficiency. The other area that is uh, new and again uh, emerging is how you look at uh, responsibility and sustainability in relation to driving innovation and new growth areas. There's a lot of literature that has been written on it, uh, I think very recently by you know, people from, uh, very, very clever people from Harvard and so on, and Michael Porter and, and Kramer, uh, and as well as others before them as well. And they talk about how innovation can actually arise from responsible management. And I don't think it's just mere academic speak, in the sense that um, I myself have actually witnessed this uh, within the Talanon group that um, I used to be with. Uh, they introduced mobile payment services in rural areas of Pakistan. They got into a bank because Pakistan has a very large population of unbanked uh, people living there. And so mobile payments and mobile banking is extremely relevant to help the unbanked actually get banking services. And that became a new revenue stream for them. Very similar to uh, what Vodafone did with the M-Pesa in Kenya, for those of you who are familiar with that. And so these are the new growth areas, right? Another good example is uh, GE and the eco-imagination product line that they have, where they basically are, are coming up with products that they say address future uh, challenges, yeah? like energy efficiency, renewable energy, and so on. So these are new product lines that hitherto they would not have thought about, but the minute they put on that sustainability lens, that responsibility lens, suddenly these new 